Welcome back to The Binger, everyone. The Umbrella Academy has been a joy for superhero and fantasy fans everywhere. The show combines all the surrealism, mania, and fun that we love to see in superpowered crime fighters. The show also has driven up the popularity of the comic series upon which the Netflix series is based. Originally published back in 2008 by Gerard Way and Gabriel Ba, The Umbrella Academy started with Volume 1, Apocalypse Suite. The first season of the new series is heavily based on this graphic novel, which means that the storylines from Volume 2 and 3, Dallas and Hotel Oblivion, will likely appear in the upcoming seasons of the show. But as in the case of the other hit shows, like American Gods or DC's Titans, the screenwriters have diverged from the source material. What does that mean for the show's future? Well, today we're exploring some options by going over the Umbrella Academy comics versus the show's biggest differences. It goes without saying, but we always give fair warning. Spoiler alerts right ahead. The Orchestra In the Umbrella Academy TV series, Vanya's love interest Leonard is what leads her to become the white violin. He's been obsessed with the Academy his entire life and intends to use Vanya's latent powers for his own means. He even goes so far as to eliminate the first chair violinist in Vanya's orchestra, ensuring that she gets the lead part. However, after discovering that Leonard stole her father's diary, she realizes that he's been manipulating her and takes revenge. Overwhelmed by betrayal, agony, and cataclysmic power, she shows up to play a recital, not knowing what'll happen. In the comics, it's the Orchestra Verdammten, which from German translates to Orchestra of the Damned, that seduces Vanya. Described as a collection of madmen and murderesses, hearts and deeds as black as the very instruments we play, they're led by the conductor. After luring her in for an audition, he tells Vanya that he wants her to play a piece he's written called the Apocalypse Suite. She initially refuses, but after a reunion with her siblings goes terrible, decides to join the orchestra after all. Like in the TV show, Vanya in the comics takes pills that were regimented by her father to suppress her doomsday capabilities. However, instead of Leonard throwing away her prescription, the orchestra straps her down to a laboratory slab to power her up. Overwhelmed by the transformation, Vanya's face changes from terrified to that of a maniac and her body turns into a white violin. The conductor is presumed to have similarly brainwashed members of the orchestra because at one point, Diego's Commissioner Gordon figure, Detective Lupo, fills him in on a string of virtuoso concert musicians disappearing. It's fair to assume the conductor had been targeting and recruiting members for years, and they would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for those meddling… okay, technically only one of them is a kid, but you know what I mean. Oh, back to Detective Lupo. He stands in for Diego's love interest and cop buddy on the show, Detective Patch. She only appears on the TV show since Diego originally had a very different love interest, which we'll get into. The Commission Season 1 of The Umbrella Academy introduced The Commission as the series' primary antagonist. Like Doctor Who's Time Agency or DC's Legend of Tomorrow's Time Bureau, the Commission dispatches agents to intervene in history. As a result, distinguished assassins Hazel and Cha Cha were sent to ensure the apocalypse would happen as planned. In the comics, because the Orchestra of Verdampton is behind the apocalypse, the Commission isn't introduced until Volume 2. Only they're called Temps Eternalis. The Umbrella Academy Volume 2, Dallas, goes into much of Number 5's story that's been seen on Netflix. Five reveals that while attempting to get back to the past to prevent the end of the world, he was captured by the Temps. He was subjected to training and surgeries that turned him into an assassin, and he was considered the best in the organization. In the television show, the commission is led by the Handler, played by Grey's Anatomy's Kate Walsh. In the comics, the Temps are led by an entity called Carmichael, who's basically Klaus from American Dad if he had a fully functional human body and a god complex. While the TV series mentions Five's role in the John F. Kennedy assassination, Volume 2 of the comics focuses on it, hence why it's called Dallas, the place where the event happened in 1963, and we'll get more into that shortly. Powers While the Hargreaves siblings in the TV series had similar powers to their comic book counterparts, there are some discrepancies worth mentioning. In both incarnations, Space Boy's power is super strength, however the two have very different limits. 
Luther on screen is a strong but beatable opponent, whereas his comic counterpart was able to punch over the Eiffel Tower. He also wears a spacesuit all the time, even after returning from the moon, and is considerably larger than all of his other siblings as an adult. In the show, Allison Hargreaves, aka The Rumor, is able to compel people to do her bidding by saying, I heard a rumor. In the comics, her powers allow her to alter reality by stating rumors. In the short story, But the Past Ain't Through With You, the team discovers Allison's body slain by the murder magician. It's later revealed that when Allison lied about her whereabouts, she inadvertently created a double to fulfill that fabrication. And so Sir Reginald, ever the ideal dad, had her clone butchered in order to teach her a lesson. Klaus's ability to harness the energy of the dead doesn't really come into full effect until the end of the TV series' first season. This happens when he discovers the link between his sobriety and his powers, but this isn't an issue in the comics. The character makes several references to drug use, but not only can he contact the dead, he can also float and he's telekinetic. In a mission during the sibling's childhood, he's even seen contacting a deceased engineer for advice on shutting down a launching spaceship. So mastering his abilities was likely deliberately added as a plot point for the TV adaptation. Relationships Ah, romance. That's exactly what comes to mind when people think of this franchise, right? In the TV series, Luther and Allison have been the central romance out of the main characters so far. Unless you count Five and Dolores. Okay, and Hazel and Agnes are pretty gosh darn adorable, but since he's technically still a bad guy, we'll put that one aside for now. Anyways, the comic version of Allison and Luther's courtship is pretty similar. Allison is married, but estranged from her husband Patrick and her daughter Claire. She tells her adopted brother that she's told Claire that she hopes she'll get to meet her uncle Luther one day before almost kissing him. And as weird as that is to watch, it's not the only questionably incestuous dynamic that was originally in the bunch. In the comics, it's made clear that Diego has feelings for his sister Vanya. In both versions, he lashes out at her for writing a memoir blasting the entire family. However, Apocalypse Suite eventually reveals that it's due to his bottle-up feelings for her, which he finally expresses during her doomsday recital. The Hazel and Cha-Cha dynamic is also very different. In the television series, Cha-Cha takes revenge on Hazel for choosing to abandon their line of work to be with Agnes. This is implied to be because she had romantic feelings for him. In the comics, both characters are men, and the relationship is entirely platonic. They're both equally committed to the gleeful Tarantino-style slangs and chasing a never-ending sugar high. The pair work together to the end. In fact, it's Klaus who possesses Cha-Cha and puts a bullet in Hazel's head. Superhero Tech On screen, the Umbrella Academy has the wealth of their father, as well as the Academy itself has a home base. Beyond that, however, they're pretty light when it comes to crime-fighting weapons and technology, with the exception of Diego. In comic books, the Hargreaves had a little extra help when it comes to taking down bad guys. Among his many talents, Sir Reginald was also an inventor. He created the Televator, an elevator-shaped rapid transportation machine, the Levitator, a belt which allows the wearer to float, and advanced communication devices. The comic shows the siblings using them in their earliest crime-fighting days and in the present. But of course, it's their individual powers that really help them prevent any tragedies, from arson to the Armageddon. Sir Reginald. As in the comics, the Umbrella Academy TV show introduces Sir Reginald Hargreaves as a man who collects and adopts seven extraordinary children. He eventually passes away, bringing the estranged siblings back together, and puts them on track for the world-saving mission. In both incarnations, he's cold, ruthless, and thoroughly resented by most of his adopted children. He even instructs them not to refer to him as dad. In the last episode of season one, a flashback shows him leaving his lover, who looks gravely ill. What appears to be a nuclear disaster, transpires in the background, and the monocle emerges at another point in history. But where he's from or how he travels through time is never really clarified. In the comics, his origins are made pretty clear in the first couple of pages. He's an alien, whose true face isn't revealed at first. He only wears a mask to appear human. He's also seen boarding what looks like a spacecraft to track down the infants in the first place. In both versions, Sir Reginald is assisted by Pogo, a chimpanzee whose intelligence he heightened. In both versions, Pogo succumbs to injuries after Vanya's rampage through the Academy. But in the comic, Five at one point had a vision of Pogo that suggested his father's experiments on him were much more horrific than imagined. Other Bad Guys Season 1 of the Umbrella Academy doesn't introduce any of the team's long-term enemies. Rather, the only extensive flashback we get of the Academy in action is them stopping a bank robbery as preteens. 
in Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Suite, a few legacy antagonists are introduced beyond the Orchestra Verdatum. In the first few pages, the siblings come face to face with zombie robot Gustav Eiffel, a zombie robot alien whose spaceship is the Eiffel Tower. The kids save Paris from annihilation and are rewarded with the key to the city and ice cream. When the group reunites for Sir Reginald's funeral, they're drawn into battle thanks to a supervillain called Dr. Terminal. He had a terminal illness that required him to constantly convert matter into energy, and at one point, ate Allison's arm. When the siblings come back together, their reunion triggers a robot army he pre-programmed to attack the city. During the battle, Vanya shows up to help, despite being powerless, and is rebuked by Diego. As a result, she goes back to the Orchestra Verdatum, who turn her into the White Violin. The Ending The ending of The Umbrella Academy Season 1 is a thrilling one. Despite their best efforts, the siblings failed to stop Vanya from shattering the moon and causing a catastrophic meteor shower. At the last moment, Five manages to open a time portal that they can all escape through and cut. The ending to Apocalypse Suite, however, is entirely its own thing. While Vanya does cause an enormous meteor from the moon to fall on Earth, Klaus is able to use his telekinetic powers to stop it. This is also implied to be the reason why Luther was stationed on the moon in the first place. All of the siblings live, and despite who knows how many casualties, the apocalypse is prevented. So everyone goes back to the academy, which was destroyed by Vanya, kind of like Bruce Wayne rebuilding Wayne Manor at the end of Batman Begins. As far as the time jumping ending in the show goes, there's a plausible guess about what could happen next. In the Umbrella Academy Dallas, the siblings find themselves a few years before the John F. Kennedy assassination. This was because the Temps forced Five to carry out the mission that his past self failed to complete. Likewise, in the TV show, Five decides not to go through with the mission in Dallas and instead manages to time travel back to the Academy. So it's possible that when season two picks up, the family will find themselves in or around 1963 with the Dallas storyline to attend to. The Dallas comic series also involves a nuclear apocalypse, which we may have seen Sir Reginald narrowly escape at the end of season one. In the comics, this one wasn't caused by Vanya, but rather by some stolen nuclear codes. It's possible that averting this disaster will make its way into season two of the show as well. Well, that's our rundown of the Umbrella Academy comics versus the show's biggest differences. What do you think? Are there any significant differences that we didn't touch on? Did you spot a similarity or Easter egg that we didn't? Do what you do best and let us know down in the comments. You know we love to hear from you. And before you go, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more great content from The Binger. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.